Hello YouTube, my name is Dan Mahoney and in this guitar lesson we're going to take one lick by Chavlo Schmidt, seen here. And with that one lick I'm going to show you how to play it up and down the neck in any key that you want to, as well as figure out different chordal possibilities to play over, not just playing it over a minor chord like Chavlo does in the example. I'm also going to show you how to make what seems like endless variations on the one idea by changing the rhythm around. Now there's going to be some free tablature that shows up on the screen, but if you want the full lesson, you have two options. You can go to my Patreon page and sign up where you'll have access to this full PDF as well as plenty of other things. Or you can go to soundslice.com and you'll have this video connected to a, a playback feature that you can slow down and speed up and loop different sections in. So I hope you enjoy. This is my first full, full length uh, guitar lesson video that I've done. I've done short ones, so I'm open to comments and criticism. Please be nice though. I uh, hope you enjoy and here we go. <laughs> Okay, let's break down what Chavalo's doing here. He's playing over a D minor 6 chord, and he's using two really useful approaches to playing over minor chords in just this quick, short little lick. The first thing he does is basically plays a 5-7 idea over the minor 1. So if we're in D minor, that would be our 1 chord, or minor 1. This might be a little more familiar shape to you. And our dominant chord of D is A. So you'll see in this first part of the lick, really A7-like, especially if you think of it in the context of this chord. So what you want to take away from that is any time that you're playing on a minor 1 chord, uh, you can be kind of superimposing or pretending that there's a dominant chord there instead, and it's always going to sound pretty cool. It's just a natural way to build tension and release. So I'll demonstrate real quick. I'm going to basically kind of play A7 ideas over a D minor chord. So some of you might actually recognize the first part of this lick from another really popular gypsy jazz song. It's actually the note for note intro for Bistro Fada. So that song's in the key of E minor, so we started somewhere else on the neck there, but we're actually going to learn how to transpose this whole lick up the neck and do it in any other key later on in the lesson. So now what's left is learning the last half of the lick. So what we're basically going to think of here is a kind of minor 6 shape or a minor 6 arpeggio. But Travelo actually makes it a little bit easier here by adding an extra note. Now why does it make it easier? Because when you do minor 6 arpeggios, there's going to be an area that is a little difficult because there's going to be one note per string resulting in a double down which can be pretty hard when you're trying to go really fast. So adding this G into this makes it so there's two notes per string. So it's really easy to start cooking this up and going a lot faster. So the whole lick again starts off with kind of a melodic minor uh, idea like an A7 idea, and then into a D minor 6 idea. Two really, really useful things when over one chord. Use dominant ideas and use kind of ar arpeggio ideas. So here it is all together. All right, so in this lesson, we're going to learn how to do a lot of variations on this and move it up the neck. But first, I want to cover one other important concept, and that's playing and recycling this lick over different chords. So if you're on a D minor 6, you should probably know this go-to shape for it. What you can notice is if you just move your middle finger one string, that becomes your G9. And that's pretty much the exact same chord. Those first four strings are staying the same. 
So what we'll kind of see here, let me play a G9 chord. And that same lick's gonna sound okay with that. Because they're so similar. So in these examples, you'll see that it'll go from a D minor six chord with the backing track to a G, a G7 add nine or a G9 chord. And then one other concept we, we do is since the first half of it, basically doing an A7 idea. On examples uh, three and six, you'll see that I actually just make it go from five to one, because you can use this lick, once again, not just over a minor chord, but you can use it over a dominant chord or a five to one idea. So let me play the five to one idea so you can hear what that sounds like. Okay, so we're going to do examples one through six now, and we're going to go straight through them. And what you want to remember is that it's the same lick, and you're hearing it over different chord possibilities. And then examples four through six are actually the exact same lick, but up an octave. Okay, here we go. Now that we know how to play the lick an octave higher and without using any open strings, we can take that idea and move it up and down the neck and transpose it to different keys. Now before we do that, let's review page one and how we actually took this one idea and played it over three different types of chord possibilities. So in example one, we were playing over a minor chord or a minor six chord. So what I want you to think of, get this shape, D minor six, and your starting point is gonna be a fifth above that root note. So over this chord, you're going to think, start on the fifth. So we get this. Okay, so our second chord possibility we went from D minor 6, and we just moved the root to G. And remember, it's basically the same chord. We're just changing the root note. That's why it works so well. So with this, we're going to start on, once again, A, which is the ninth of this dominant chord, a dominant 9 chord. So here's G9. And here's me starting on the ninth. Once again, if you're on a dominant nine chord, usually this is going to function as like the four chord. Like if we're in D minor, that's our one. That's going to be our four chord, our dominant four. When you're doing that, start on the ninth, just a whole step above this shape. And then the third possibility uh, in number three, we did a five to one relationship. So from A7 back to D minor. And when you're doing it that way, you're just starting on the root of your dominant chord. So A7, you're just going to start right there on the root. Let's see what that sounds like. All right, 
So let's start recycling this into different keys. Uh, we're going to do this over G minor and those three kind of possibilities. Uh, so G minor or G minor 6, we'd be starting on the fifth, D. Let's hear that. The second possibility is when we take this chord, make it a dominant 9. So right now it's a C9 chord. And remember with these, we start a whole step above on the 9th. There's C, so D is the 9th. So here's C9. Starting on the 9th. That one's kind of cool. You end up... Uh, landing on the flat seven. And uh, the last possibility is doing the five to one. So if we're in G minor, we're going to do a D seven down to G minor. So with that chord possibility, a five to one, we're actually starting on the root note of the dominant chord. So here's D seven to G minor. Now that you can transpose this lick and play it over different types of chord possibilities, we're going to use a real life example in uh, the first half of All of Me. So we're not going to do anything over the C chord or the E7 chord, but right away we have an A7 to D minor, a 5 to 1. So when we do that, remember we're going to start on the root of the 5 chord. So that's. A7 to D minor, we get to use it. Right after that, we do an E7 to A minor. So once again, it's a 5 to 1, so we're going to start this lick on the root of the 5 chord, E7. After that, we go to a D9 chord. And once again, we're going to take that same lick, this time starting on the 9th. But we're going to cut it short because that D9 becomes a D minor shortly after. But let's see what it sounds like. The remainder of this lesson is going to take the first lick that we did and break it up into two parts. The first half being kind of the dominant seven idea. And then the second half of it is kind of the minor six idea. And what we're gonna do with both of those is explore different rhythmic possibilities. And we're gonna do it with a process that I use quite often. In fact, you might've heard me talk about this in different lessons before, but it's basically a four step process where if you have a lick or melody, you can try it with eighth notes and triplets. And with both of those, you can do it on an off beat or a down beat. So examples eight through nine, take the first part of the lick and go through that four step process. We do one of them with an off beat, that's example eight. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four. And then we're going to do that same lick, but start on a down beat. So we'd get one and two and three and four and one and two end. Then we can do the exact same thing by uh, changing it to triplets. That's going to be examples uh, 10 and 11. So we get one and a two and a three and a four and a if we start on a downbeat. And then my favorite usually is the offbeat triplets. So we get one and a two and a three and a four and a one. All right, so here's eight, nine, 10, and 11 over a D minor six chord. Number eight again.
examples 12, 13, 14, and 15 are going to go through that exact same rhythmic process we just covered, starting on a downbeat, starting on an offbeat, and doing it with eighth notes or triplets. Now what we're going to do differently though is change the positioning. And what I want to cover before we get further is um, a right hand issue that took me a while to kind of figure out because I was kind of so focused on the downstrokes only happening on when you change a string, I kind of forgot about an important rule, which is ending, whenever possible, a phrase on a downstroke. So when we were doing it here, it naturally ends with down, up, down. Now on example 12, If you're doing that same kind of idea, you're going to end on an upstroke, which whenever possible, speed is the, the main factor, you should end on those downstrokes. So double downs a lot on the end. Instead of... So here we go, same process with 12, 13, 14, and 15 on a D minor chord. Example 16 just expands on the ideas we just talked about, where we take a lick and we rhythmically displace it by starting it on a different beat of the bar. In this case, we're going to start on the end of four and use some triplets. So we'd get a one, two, three, four, and one, and a two, and a three, and a four, and two, three, four. Let's hear it with some music. One, two, three. So examples 17 and 18, once again, are just expanding on that rhythmic idea we've been talking about, where we take one lick and try it with different rhythms and different starting points. So we're going to use uh, quarter note triplets this time, and once again, start on a downbeat and then an offbeat. <laughs> Let's do it with an offbeat now. So here's example 18. Examples 19 through 23 are going to take the last half of the lick, the kind of like D minor 6 part. We're going to go back upwards. And we're going to go through the same rhythmic process that we did earlier, where we do downbeats, offbeats, triplets, eighth notes. Um, I should say, though, that we're not going to use the dominant to the one chord approach, like the A7 back to D minor. And that's because the uh, part of the lick that really has that dominant sound to it is the first part of the lick. The... So since we don't have that part, we're not going to really mess around trying to recycle this into dominant areas. So we're just going to do our D minor 6, which will also work on our G9. Remember, all of these you can be doing up the octave and in different keys. Thank you. 
wrap it up now. Thanks for joining me. And please let me know if you have any questions. You can get in touch with me on Facebook, uh, Instagram. Find me on my Patreon page. Leave a comment below. And please like and subscribe and all that fun stuff. Uh, until next time, my name is Dan Mahoney, and thanks for joining me.